Have you ever heard of the man who sold an imaginary airport for $242 million? In the annals of fraud, few can rival the audacity of Emmanuel Nwud, this Nigerian con artist, known for his role in one of the largest banking scams in history, had a talent for deceit that was matched only by his ambition. His most audacious act? Convincing a bank executive to invest a staggering $242 million in an airport that didn't exist. Our story begins in 1995, with Nude posing as Paul Ogwuma, the then governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. It was under this guise that he first made contact with Nelson Sakaguchi, a senior executive at Banco Noroeste, a prominent Brazilian bank. Nude painted a vivid picture for Sakaguchi. He spun a tale of a lucrative $389 million contract awarded by the Nigerian government to a consortium tasked with building an airport. It was a venture ripe with potential, a golden opportunity just waiting for the right investor. Nwood, the supposed governor, extended an invitation to Sakaguchi to invest in this lucrative business. He promised a high return on investment, a bait Sakaguchi found too enticing to resist. And so, over the course of several years, Sakaguchi wired roughly $242 million to various bank accounts controlled by Nwood and his accomplices. The sheer scale of the deception was staggering. But, like all houses of cards, it was destined to collapse. The scam was uncovered, and in 2004, Nood found himself behind bars. A year later, he was sentenced to 25 years in prison on charges of fraud, conspiracy, and money laundering. Yet, this was just one chapter in Nood's notorious career. He was implicated in other fraud schemes, including a $1.5 million scam involving the sale of another fictitious airport and a $10 million scam involving a non-existent oil refinery. Emmanuel Nwood's fraudulent exploits earned him a place in the annals of scam history, costing his victims millions and tarnishing the reputation of Nigeria's banking industry. And so, the stage was set for one of the biggest scams in banking history. Nwood had a lucrative proposal for Sakaguchi that was too good to resist. With the precision of a seasoned con artist, Nwood crafted an irresistible narrative. He spun a tale of a country on the rise, Nigeria, and its government's ambitious plan to construct a state-of-the-art airport. An investment opportunity of this magnitude doesn't come around often. Nwood, masquerading as the central bank governor, Paul Ogwuma, played his role to perfection. He was persuasive, confident, and most importantly, he had an answer for every question Sakaguchi threw at him. Nude painted a picture of a lucrative venture, promising sky-high returns on investment. He assured Sakaguchi that this was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, a golden ticket to astronomical wealth. The bait was set, and Sakaguchi took it. He was convinced by Nude's elaborate deception and promised returns. Sakaguchi saw this as a chance to make a significant profit and agreed to the deal. He was ready to invest, ready to be a part of Nigeria's growth story. Over the next few years, Sakaguchi sent around $242 million to various bank accounts. These accounts were, unbeknownst to Sakaguchi, controlled by Nwuda and his accomplices. Sakaguchi believed his money was being used to build an airport, a gateway connecting Nigeria to the world. However, the airport existed only in Nwud's web of lies. Sakaguchi was sending his money into a bottomless pit a pit carefully dug by Nwood. Every dollar Sakaguchi sent was another brick in Nwood's castle of deception. Sakaguchi thought he was investing in concrete and steel, in runways and terminals. He thought he was buying a piece of Nigeria's future. But all he was buying was a story, a fiction spun by a master storyteller. Little did he know that he was buying into thin air. But as time passed, the truth started to unfold. The house of cards Nude had meticulously built began to sway under the weight of its own deceit. It was in 2004, almost a decade after the scam was initiated, that the truth finally surfaced. Nude's elaborate web of lies was exposed when an investigation into the massive financial losses incurred by Banco Noroeste came to light. The bank's internal audit revealed a series of suspicious transactions, all leading back to one man, 
Emmanuel Nwood. The smoke had cleared and the mirrors had shattered, revealing the true magnitude of the fraud. The authorities were alerted and Nwood was arrested. The man who had once swindled a senior executive of a bank with promises of lucrative returns was now facing the harsh reality of the law. The man who had impersonated the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria was now in the custody of Nigerian law enforcement. As the investigation progressed, it was discovered that the airport scam was just the tip of the iceberg. Nwuda's fraudulent activities extended far beyond the imaginary airport. His portfolio of deception included a one and a half million dollar scam involving the selling of a non-existent airport and a ten million dollar scam involving the sale of a fake oil refinery. Each revelation was more shocking than the last. Nude had built an empire based on lies, deceit and manipulation. He had exploited the trust of individuals and institutions, leaving a trail of financial ruin in his wake. His arrest sent shockwaves across Nigeria and the world. It was a stark reminder of the extent to which fraudsters would go to enrich themselves. It was a clear demonstration of the audacity, ingenuity and ruthlessness of scammers. The man who had once been hailed as a successful businessman was now exposed as one of Nigeria's most notorious scammers. His empire of lies had come crashing down around him. New Day's empire of deceit was finally crumbling. The law finally caught up with Nwud. In 2004, the elaborate web of deceit that Emmanuel Nwud had so meticulously woven began to unravel. An international investigation led by the Brazilian authorities and Interpol eventually traced the fraudulent transactions back to Nwud. The law enforcement agencies in Nigeria were alerted and they promptly apprehended Nwud. This marked the beginning of a high-profile trial that would expose the magnitude of New Day's audacious scam. The court proceedings were fraught with dramatic revelations as the prosecution laid bare the intricate details of the fraud. Nudu was charged with 33 counts of fraud, conspiracy and money laundering, among other crimes. The evidence against him was overwhelming. The court heard how Nude impersonated the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, how he deceived a senior executive at Banco Noroeste and how he used a network of accomplices to siphon off millions of dollars. The prosecution presented bank records, email correspondences and witness testimonies that painted a damning picture of Nwood's fraudulent activities. The defense tried to argue that Nwood was a victim of a larger conspiracy, but the jury was not convinced. After a lengthy trial, Nwood was found guilty on all charges. In 2005, he was sentenced to 25 years in prison, a sentence that reflected the severity of his crimes. The judge remarked that Nwood's actions had not only cost his victims millions of dollars, but had also tarnished the image of Nigeria's banking industry. He hoped that the sentence would serve as a deterrent to others contemplating similar fraudulent schemes. Nord's reign of fraud had finally come to an end. His audacious scam had run its course. The man who had sold an imaginary airport for $242 million was now behind bars paying the price for his deceit. His story serves as a stark reminder of the lengths some will go to in the pursuit of ill-gotten wealth. The repercussions of Nude's actions were far-reaching. The devastation left in the wake of his deceit was not confined to his victims alone, but reverberated throughout the entire banking industry of Nigeria, staining its reputation. His act of audacious fraudulence not only cost his victims a staggering sum, but it also sent shockwaves through the financial world, casting a shadow of mistrust and skepticism. The victims of nude scam were left reeling, their lives irrevocably altered by the loss of millions. The scale of the deception was so massive that it left many struggling to comprehend the magnitude of their loss. The financial impact was severe, with many losing their life savings, their security, and their trust in the banking system. The Nigerian banking industry was dealt a crippling blow. 
The fallout from the scandal led to a loss of faith in the country's financial institutions. The industry, once seen as a beacon of growth and prosperity, was now viewed with suspicion and wariness. Confidence in the system dwindled and the flow of foreign investment slowed to a trickle. Beyond the financial sphere, Nwud's scam marred Nigeria's image on the global stage. The country was thrust into the limelight, not for its rich culture or potential, but for an audacious act of fraud. The scam painted Nigeria as a hotbed of corruption and deceit, a stereotype that the nation has been striving to shake off ever since. In response to the scandal, stricter banking regulations were introduced. The Nigerian government, eager to restore faith in the country's financial institutions, ramped up its efforts to combat fraud. A renewed focus was placed on transparency, accountability and vigilance in hopes of preventing such a catastrophe from happening again. The tale of the man who sold an imaginary airport for $242 million serves as a stark reminder of the perils of deceit and greed. It's a sobering lesson in the destructive power of dishonesty, a testament to the far-reaching consequences of one man's unscrupulous actions and a cautionary tale for the ages.